sixth day of racing today and a tough finish here at Superbest, but the weather at least is on the rider's side. Time now for your emails from the commentary box. Let's have a look at the first one. It comes in from Terry Davis from Cambridge. Terry is asking, how many calories do the riders burn up on a stage of the Tour de France? Well, it depends really for what kind of stage it is, and it depends also on climatic conditions. On the flatter stages, a rider will burn around about 5,000 calories. But on the big mountain stages, that figure can be as high as 8,000. Let's go on to the second question then. This is coming from Ed Simpson in Greenwich. What is the significance of the yellow numbers some riders are wearing? Well, we all know that the yellow jersey indicates the man who leads the race on the shortest time. Well, the yellow numbers is for the team that leads on the shortest time. And the team competition is actually the time taken on the first three riders of each team every day. Added together, the team with the shortest time is the team leaders. And at the moment, I think it's Team Garmin Chipotle leading. It is indeed. The top three teams, Garmin Chipotle, Team Columbia and CSC Saxo. All right, the third question then. This one comes in from Sarah Evans, Cardiff. How can the chasing peloton time the catch of the breakaway so close to the finishing line as they did yesterday? Well, I don't think they calculate. In fact, it was a miscalculation yesterday by the main field because normally what they would try and do is pull the breakaway back at around about 10 to 15 kilometers to go using my favorite little recipe of pulling back a minute for every 10 kilometers of the race. However, yesterday, the main field really got caught out, I think, by the strength of those three men at the front. Well, when Mark Cavendish actually got alongside the last of that breakaway, Nicola Vogendy, there was only two seconds of the race still to go. Let's go back to the action. With just five stages and 831 kilometers raced, the tour hit the mountains of the Massif Central. Stage six was 195 and a half kilometers from Aigueronde to Superbes. There were four climbs, including the one up to the finish at just under 1300 meters, with a steep kick towards the end that looked the perfect launch pad for a late attack. Cadell Evans got in an early attack. No actual bodily harm, I don't think, but he certainly made his point to the motorbike policeman he thought was slowing down the team car as he was paced back into the race after a mechanical problem. Alejandro Valverde was likely gauze down the right side after his crash the previous day, but felt good enough to have his team on the front on the run into Superbus. In the case that Paul riders are running out of pacemakers here, sooner or later I think somebody's going to go. Yeah, well, I tell you what, they might be running out of pacemakers, but there are the guys this afternoon, Phil, have done the job for Alejandro Valverde. They're pulling off now, and now we're going to see who is the one who's got the acceleration. Menchov was on the left-hand side, Cadell Evans on the right-hand side, and this is the difficulty at the back. And there is Damiano Cunigo not enjoying this last one and a half kilometres. No, he's not, and I'm surprised to see that, but Cunigo, who we thought had good form, is shaking his head a little bit there. These riders under extreme pressure here now as the, the big men of the Tour de France suddenly have lifted the tempo. Look at the gaps that have been forced open here now. And Kim Kirken is still up here. The yellow jerseys here. Menchoff, Evans, Ricardo Rico, Valverde. All of these riders going shoulder to shoulder to the summit. The only man who's got a teammate left in there to give him any hand at all is Alejandro Valverde and his teammate has come straight back up to the front. That's Oscar Pereira on the front now. Try Trying to set the sprint up here for Alejandro Valverde. Moving up, look at the man on the right-hand side in the yellow jersey. The white, red and white, the white and yellow jersey. <laughs> that is Ricardo Rico. He's waiting to pounce. His nickname, by the way, is the Cobra. And the man we haven't mentioned, Frank Schleck, the champion of Luxembourg, is here as well. This is it. And now Pereiro, who was given the Tour de France after Landis was disqualified. And there's a crash here. Schumacher has touched the wheel. The yellow jersey is in trouble. And as they sprint for the summit of the real here, Ricardo Rico is going for it and there will be time lost I think for the yellow jersey depends how the judges read the last kilometer rule but look at this the man called the Cobra is striking again as he did in the early days of the Giro d'Italia he gets the stage with Valverde is second but locked right on his wheel Cadell Evans Frank Schleck and then comes Kirk and, and then comes uh, one of the riders there I think it's uh, 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 yes Ro Roman Kreutiger of Liquigas comes over well, yeah. I have a funny feeling, Phil, we may well see that they will not apply the kilometre rule on a climb like this because this is a mountain top finish and yeah. we're going to get a change in the overall classification. Well, I really think they will split time the riders. Now, look in the distance there. There is the yellow jersey coming up towards the line of Schumacher. I make him down by 32 seconds, so he's definitely lost that leader's yellow jersey. Not a very nice way to lose it, but, you know, the best place of the front run is Kim Kirken. I think he'll be the next leader. And let's have a look now at the slow motion of the accident here. Really unfortunate, but as you can see here, there's a move. 
and it looks to me as though Kim Kirken is the rider that Stefan Schumacher has hit his back wheel. It looks as though Kirken moved across to his right up the inside of Frank Schleck, uh, but it was Kirken's wheel. Now, how ironic is that going to be? Because Kirken, I think, will be in yellow. Stefan Schumacher didn't seem so sure, or at least his team didn't, because having got onto the bus for a consolatory leg rub and ego massage, they sent him off again in the direction of the podium. It was a wasted journey, though. The president of the Commissaires was clear on the rules and how they applied. Malheureusement, il est victime du, du règlement puisque l'arrivée est en sommet, et donc la règle du dernier kilomètre et des trois derniers kilomètres ne joue pas, si bien qu'il est crédité du temps. So, Team Colombia's astonishing opening week continued. A stage win for Cavendish, Thomas Lovqvist leading the young rider competition, and Kim Kirchen, the owner of the green and now the yellow jerseys, even if it had taken a crash to help him claim the race lead. Can you just tell me what happened with uh, Schumacher? Did you know what happened when he hit the deck? No, actually not. Uh, I have been on the right side, so they closed and uh, everybody was breaking down in front of me, so I had to break down too. And uh, I couldn't go for the victory then. Uh, I lost too much speed and uh, I lost the stage too. And uh, Schumacher I haven't seen for the last two Ks. And the next few days? Next few days, uh, um, we try to control the race, uh, it would be hard. Uh, but I have a good team uh, and I have a lot of confidence. Thanks, Kim. Well done. Thank you. Yeah.